this is the first time, not only in my career, but probably in my lifetime where inflation really might be a future concern. You can see here that since the late 1980s, inflation has seen some spikes, but for the most part, it's been in a downward trend. And that has been a tailwind for both stocks and bonds really over the last 40 years. But I think with the recent spike we've seen in inflation, investors are right to question whether this will continue and if so, what will be the implications for portfolios? So let's first think about what inflation is for a moment. It's persistent or year after year increases in prices. It's not just a one-time bump up in the price levels. So I think we'll need to see prices increase next year of more than 3% or so for inflation really to become worrisome. So our base case is that inflation, the inflation spikes we've seen are likely to be somewhat temporary, much like it was after the first two rounds of quantitative easing after the financial crisis. But as portfolio managers, it's, it's certainly important to play devil's advocate. It's important to look at some of the data that suggests otherwise and monitor those as we go forward. So I wanted to highlight a few of the data points that would argue that inflation could pose a problem down the line. Historically, increases in wages has been one of the best indicators on the direction of future inflation. And so what I'm showing here in this chart is wage growth in green, it tends to follow job openings in blue. Okay, the job openings data, uh, data point here again in blue, is jobs where employers are having a difficult time finding qualified candidates. And that's been the case more so now than at any other time in the past 20 years. So this would argue that inflation may be a bit more persistent as we head into 2022. Another data point uh, or inflationary data point that I wanted to mention revolves around the housing market. So interestingly, I don't think many investors know that housing or really rent prices actually encompasses nearly 40% of the inflation index. So with such a large compo component of inflation, I think it's incredibly important to watch this market. It shouldn't make sense to everybody that rent prices tend to follow the increase or decrease in actual home prices. And that's what this chart here is showing. Even if you're not in the market for a new home, prices have gone through the roof over the past year, no pun intended, but, um, and that's being shown here by this orange line signaling that home prices have increased by roughly 15% nationwide over the past uh, year and a half. We don't think this is a precursor to what culminated in 2008. Uh, people are, for the most part, they aren't over leveraged and they're not extending themselves to buy multiple homes. So fortunately, I think it's a bit of a different environment from where we were, um, what is that, 14 or 15 years ago. I think those two are probably the biggest data points, those on wages and on housing, that point to inflation sticking around a bit. One, you had, after 2008, you had um, suppliers and the supply of new homes in, at incredibly depressed levels. So there aren't a lot of new homes coming onto the market right now, but there's a lot of demand for new homes. So it's going to take a little bit of a while for that to catch up. Secondly, the consumer people are, have just a lot more money now saved. Um, and with rates as low as they are, it does create a favorable backdrop for buying a home. But we've, got, we've gotten to the point now where we're seeing the housing data kind of roll over a little bit. So I, don't, I, don't, I certainly don't think we're, housing prices are going to come off fall off a cliff, but it's certainly going to moderate going forward, I think. The Fed believes that the inflation spikes we are witnessing are transitory. I'm sure everybody's heard this word uh, a ton this year. That means as soon as we return to some sense of normalcy and supply chains are back and operating at capacity, much of this inflation spike that we've seen will start to subside. This chart here is one of my favorite charts and stories from earlier in the year. This is the price of lumber. So from May of 2020, which is down here, through early May of this year, prices for lumber were up more than 400%. And it's almost all because of supply issues. But over the past four months, prices for lumber have plummeted by nearly 70% as more and more sawmills have come back online. And there are similar stories like this playing out uh, all, over, all, over the, all over the country, which is leading the Fed to believe that inflation will not be a longer term problem. But if inflation is not transitory and it does remain more elevated than the Fed wants, 
Well, they have many tools at their disposal to help rein that in. And the biggest one being raising interest rates. Now, again, that's not our base case. We think there might be moderate inflation, but nothing to the point where it would be a severe issue like it was in the 1970s. If inflation does become more of a sustained issue, the investment implications of that won't come about overnight. So we will be able to adjust portfolios if, that, if it does become necessary to do so.